Welcome to Salvatera Pottery's channel, where we show you how we create pottery from our production studio and gallery located in Weaverville, North Carolina. I wonder how to make a lidded pot and specifically a canister. So that's what I am going to work on today for you. And let's get started. So the first thing I do is measure out my clay and I have one pound. Now this is kind of the odd thing that I learned somewhere along the way. Throw the lid first and fit the cylinder to the lid. So that's what I'm doing. This is lid, one pound, and let's get rolling. All right, so I'm centering the clay and I'm gonna cone it up and back down. And that is pretty much centered. I'm using High Waters Brownstone Cone, I think it's four to six, we fired a six, so anyway. All right, so there it is, it's nice and centered. And the next thing I need to do is go down in the middle and I'm actually gonna leave the bottom a little thicker than I do on most pots because I'm throwing this lid upside down and then I'm gonna trim it off to make a nice little dome. So here we go. And you can see how I'm kind of doing a curve like this for the piece. And that is already starting to make that shape for this lid. Okay, so I'm going to thin it out a little bit up and I'm going to go a little flatter. And here is the, I don't know, flange, I guess, um, for the lid right there. All right, so it's still a little high. I'm going to leave it like that and I'm going to push this, this and the, this together and make it one piece. And I'm just going to do it slowly, slowly go okay now that is stuck together all right now I want to pull up this little spot here and I hope you can see that yeah pretty good and I'm gonna flatten my lid down some because it was a high there we go all right so now I'm gonna make a little gutter here where the cylinder comes and fits in and I'm just supporting from the bottom and kind of digging my fingernail in at the top. There we go. So I've got this little rim here and now I'm going to finish this off by squeezing it and flattening it because I want the lid to hang over the pot a little bit. And that is pretty much it for a lid. Let me get the water out of it. I like to stick a little swirl in it just to jazz it up, wipe it down. I'm going to thicken this spot up a little bit because it was too thin. That's the first spot it's going to break. So it has to be thick enough to have some strength and it'll be less likely to break. Okay, so that is the lid and it's upside down like I said. Let me cut it off and I will show you what we did here. Here you go. So there is an upside down lid. The cylinder will fit right in here in this little gutter. So that is the first step. Okay, we need to measure it real quick. And so let's measure it so I can make sure we get a nice good fit. And I'm liking that. So I'm measuring where the inside of my cylinder will be. The inside. Okay. There goes the lid. Let's get another bat. So these are double tempered masonite bats. My husband made them for me years and years and years ago, and I'm still using them. And uh, I have several bat systems actually, but um, when I run out of my plaster ones that I go to my double tempered masonite ones. Okay, so here's the bottom part. It is two pounds of clay. So let's get that stuck and centered. So I don't even drink coffee. Um, I do have a couple canisters in, on my countertop. I think they're absolutely beautiful to have canisters on your countertop. Um, these ones are for an order. They're going to Kentucky. So, okay. So there's where I'm going to start, right there. The nice thing about these bats, because they're square, they help me to determine how 
wide to go on a piece. Rather than just a great big bat, it's, uh, it really, really helps to have square bats because I can kind of gauge how far to go out on each bat. All right, so there is our hole. Collared it in a little bit. And let's get our first pull going. And there we go. It's easy as that. Yeah, right, huh? <laughs> okay, so um, I studied at USC Asheville. My teacher was kind of old school. She would show you the basics and made you figure out the rest. So the way I throw is somewhat like she threw, but uh, you know, over the years I've kind of developed how I like to throw and how I do bottoms and all that kind of stuff. So I figured no two potters throw exactly alike, and that's me included. So pick the things that you like about what I do and do other things that is to your preference. All right, so I'm just making sure the bottom is smooth there. And this is my third pull, thinning out and pulling Getting some nice height. So I'm getting a lot of weight and that height from the clay in the bottom. Because I want the sides of the bottom to be pretty much the same size as the sides on the top. So this is just a check. Okay, we've got a little bit to go. Very good. And I like to throw against this piece to get it straight. And so that's what we're going to do. And it kind of smooths the ridges out a little bit too, but it helps get the cylinder straighter than I can do by myself eyeballing. All right, I'm going to check the size again. Let's see where we are. We are close. Good. I'd like to be smaller than I need rather than the opposite way around. It's easier to widen it out than it is to collar it in. So I always try to stay keep my cylinder in and and then widen it out. So I'm just refining this, making it a little wider so that lid will fit. Compress at the top and I gotta be a little more close now. Let's take a look. Yes, like that, like that a lot. Okay, I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit. In the inside, softly with the sponge. On the outside, softly with the sponge. press the top and then the last thing I'm going to do I got this tool um, I bought uh, a studio out and this was a cool tool that I uh, inherited through buying that studio and I so I've been using that lately to undercut just kind of scraping off the excess clay and I really like the result of that that's a nice clean undercut all right so I'm gonna wire this up and that is our first out of four um, coffee canisters I'm gonna do today. So tomorrow or the next day, I will trim the top, put the handle on it, put the extra stuff to the coffee uh, canister, and I will come back to you then. Thanks for watching. If you are enjoying our video, please consider supporting Salvaterra Pottery by purchasing a pot. You may do so through our website, salvaterrapottery.com, or better yet, visit us at our studio, Weaverville, North Carolina, just 10 minutes north of Asheville. Any purchase helps us to continue our educational videos and work in the studio. And remember to like and subscribe. All right. It really so does help other folks. The studio and I'm finishing up, up my coffee containers and I put little coffee labels and little tea labels and that kind of thing. So let me show you how I do that. It starts with an extrusion, and if you don't have an extruder and you're kind of going back and forth with it, we probably use this extruder almost every day, if not for one thing or another. If you haven't seen our butter tray uh, video, we actually even use it to make butter trays. So this is a different ribbon than the butter tray one, of course. We have bunches of ribbons. So there we go. And I'm gonna put down some WD-40 real quick. And there we go. And I just put use WD-40 as my release agent. If I didn't put it down there, it was it would stick when I roll out uh, 
this strip. So what the reason I start with uh, an extruded piece is it gives me some consistency. And all I'm doing now is flattening this out a little bit. And I have nine canisters that need labels. I have uh, eight coffees and then one special order that is a tea that they wanted the size of our coffee. So there we go. All right, so a long time ago, I found these great little stamps I've talked about that were in the kids section um, and that I used, and they're really kind of fancy, like this is tea and cookies. So this isn't the stamp I bought. I actually rolled out a piece of clay like I just did, took the little uh, stamps and made these words, and then I cast them, and so now I have these. So every time I need something that says, oops, this one says cookie, not coffee, um, every time, okay. So I also like to stick a little WD-40 on the coffee. And I'm going to go ahead and just make a bunch of these. And so I just stamp them in um, one after the other. And I need eight of these. And I usually will do a couple extras. So let's go ahead and get those going. And then I, because the canisters are drier than these labels, what I usually do is uh, make these a little early and then I put them over curves because they're going to go around a canister set and then I let them stiffen up so they're a little bit closer to the dryness of the um, canister. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm gonna do eight and I, I usually like to do an extra here is nine and then I have to do this one that says T that's for a special order so let me put a little WD-40 on that one and get that one going too because I threw all the canisters at the same time all right so there they are all stamped I'm going to get my needle tool and cut them apart. Can you imagine if I had to do all of these one letter at a time, how much longer it would have taken me? Uh, we make enough of these that it was worth me taking the time to cast those. And uh, I probably have had these for about, 10 years now maybe so uh, the little bit of time it took me to cast these that say coffee and tea and all that has really paid off over the years all right so I'm putting them over these little curves and I actually just made these little curves by um, I've got a mixture that I mixed up and I stuck them in uh, uh, PVC pipe to get a little curve like that and these are made so they can actually go in the kiln and fire, and they've been fired several times, actually. And if you're ever interested in that little recipe, if you need to make something that you can fire over and over and over again, let me know and I'll look it up. Another potter at one point had given it to me. And this little tea didn't want to come off because I think I went off of where the WD-40 is. Let's see, one more curve. All right. So here are the little coffees that are going to stiffen up and then we will get going with putting those on our pieces. Okay, so I will catch you in a minute over by the wheel. I have to trim a lid and show you how I do all that. So this is a lid that I threw two days ago actually. It took two days to stiffen up on a bat and you throw it upside down with the gutter in it. I call it a gutter. And now it, the top needs trimmed because this was the bottom. And now it's gonna become the top of the lid. And so all of these were measured to fit the canisters. And I like to use what is called a shore form tool. It's like a little cheese grater. And that's what I use to get the initial clay off quickly. And then I'll go back in with a different tool to refine uh, what I'm trimming here. 
So, okay, that's about all I'm gonna do with the short form. And then let me get a little loop tool. I don't like that one. No, well, maybe I'll have to use that one because I can't find one. All right, well, what am I gonna do with this one? So just a little loop tool to uh, refine this spot here. And so I like to trim it clear off so there's nowhere where I had cut it. And then, um, me personally, I like to make an indentation of where the, the handle's gonna go, and then kind of smooth it over a little bit. So there, it's just a, a, like a little refined detail. And then I like to put my little swirl in my lid. Okay, so let's smooth this off real quick with the sponge. All right, so that is the lid. This is called a Giffen Grip. If you haven't seen them, it helps you center a piece very quickly. And since we do a lot of centering, it's just fast to put it in and it, it uh, you know, it grab based on how you turn that. So, all right, here is the lid. And now it's all trimmed up. And so I'll show you how I put my handles on. Okay, so I make my handles about five inches and I have my little really worn out blue um, ruler here and so I'm just this is a six inch ruler so I'm just going a little bit short and so you can see I do everything like several at a time that's just kind of the nature of production pottery and so I extruded this out and there's some handles and I'm going to do my little curl method curl up one edge turn curl up the other edge and then curl it like that. And so that will be the handle. So let me do another one. It's curl, curl, curl. I started doing this because I like just tucking the rough edges on, up and under. And then all I have to do is go like this and get a perfectly uniform curve. So let's get this guy's little handle on. And I need some slip. And all slip is, is um, clay that has had water added to it to make it like pudding. And I usually use a little immersion tool or a drill to mix it up and it's usually really, really smooth. So I scored that, which means I just put a few X's on there and I stick a little slip on here. And when I'm doing this, I usually do pull out all the lids, score them all, slip them all, and then go put handles on them all, kind of in an assembly line. And because I did that little spiral in here, I can easily see where it's centered. And I can, because I put this little detail around here when I was trimming, I can also get it symmetrical of where it's going on both sides. And then I push a thumb down in both sides, and then I need one of my to do brushes and I'm just going to clean up the slip right there so there's no like excess slip and it looks like good craftsmanship so let's clean that one off and around this one you generally want enough slip on there so it does squirt out and then you clean it up then that's how I usually know I've got enough slip all right so there's our lid, we'll come a little closer. So there it is, it's a sweet little lid, okay? And then I will be back to show you how to do the coffees in a little bit. All right, so the next thing we do with our little canisters, and actually here's the little lid that I just did. It fits perfectly in the gutter, um, so you can see that. So this is our little canister, and I like to have a little wooden spoon to go with the canister uh, set. So I always have one set setting here with me when I do this, and I mark where the little loop needs to go to hold that little spoon in. So I just scored it. We're gonna stick a little bit of slip, all right? where I scored and these are about four inches long so same exact extruded ribbon 
because we want it to all coordinate and go together. Curl it under and around like this. And then I'm going to stick it on my coffee pot. And I'm not happy with where I put that score because it's a little close. So I'm going to go a little further out. It's a little too tight for my taste. And a little bit more slip. All right. And there it goes. We had a different spoon that we were using and I liked it a lot. And then we just couldn't get it anymore. And the little loop that I just put on here ended up being a lot higher. So it really looks funny to me right now to have these so low, but that's what it requires for me to be able to get the lid on without uh, hitting the little spoon. So there we go. There is the little handle that holds the little wooden spoon. And next and the last step is putting the thing on that says coffee. So I have my fan going back here and I made, you saw me make my coffees. So I'm getting them stiffened up a little quicker than usual just so I can finish this video. So let's get going on then. Here's one of my little ribbon coffees. We are gonna score that real quick. And I like my loop to, if I'm facing it to be on the right. And then I'm just gonna score real quick here on my pot where I'm going to put the label. So let's stick some slip on the label. And I like to use, like I said, a nice general, generous amount. And we're just gonna stick this on here. It says coffee. There it goes. And I like to put a thumb pression on both sides. Make sure it's straight. And honestly, I like to leave it where it is um, not tight going around the curve, but a little loose because this coffee word is still softer clay than, than the canister set. And that's going to give it a little bit of room to shrink. And if I didn't do that, somewhere on this little label that says coffee, it's going to crack because something has to give when it's drying and it'll be that label. Oh, right. I like using this little mud sponge tool that I got. Um, it is a, a nice little detail sponge to kind of get in special places. Okay, so I'm loving that. That is looking really sharp. These are going to a new gallery of ours in Black Mountain, North Carolina. Uh, we just picked up and so they ordered a bunch of coffees. And I'm going to bring it closely to you and so you can see the whole thing. There it is. There's the little lid that fits perfectly in its little gutter. If you can see it, I don't know, might not be able to see it. And that is pretty much it for this little guy. So I'm going to finish up the rest of these and then post a picture at the end of the video of how this looks finished. So there you go. Thanks for joining me. Bye.